Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your word, for in it and through it you reveal yourself to us. Help us to hear you and to see you today. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you thought for just a moment, how many ballets could you name? Now, you may be a real ballet fan. You may be able to reel off a whole bunch. But when I asked myself this question, I could come up with two. One of them is the Nutcracker, which is out of season right now, but is perhaps one of the best known. And the other one I just heard is Swan Lake. And then my list ended. Now, you may know a lot more than that. You may be a dance fan. You may be a, a, a ballet fan. But that's all I could come up with. Dance is not something that's been a really significant piece of my life. As we celebrated Ann Congdon's life last Thursday, we acknowledge the fact that dance was an important part of her life. She apparently was very good at the jitterbug, won a number of contests for that reason, and that was an expression of her joy. That's something that she liked to do in her life. Now, you may be the same way. You may love to dance. You may do it every opportunity you get. <clears throat> Both of our scriptures today have an element of dance within them. That's not the point of the scriptures, but that can give us a, a jumping off spot, so to speak, as we consider the dance that was incorporated into both of these scriptures. We hear in the text from Samuel about David dancing, and we hear in the text from Mark about the young girl dancing. It's interesting to contrast those two experiences and what they might be able to tell us about ourselves and our relationship to God. In the text from Samuel, David has decided he needs to move the ark of God. He needs to move it from where it was into Jerusalem. The Israelites have now recaptured Jerusalem from the Jebusites. And David wants to establish it as his city, as the capital for all the people. And so he decides that's where the ark needs to be. And so he gathers a whole bunch of people you remember, the scripture tells us he gathered 30,000 of his men to move the ark. That's a significant number of people. This was a significant event that was taking place. The ark, where the presence of God was, was being moved to a new place. David understood the significance of this, and so he called a lot of people together and said, Hey, be a part of this. We're going to move the ark. And we read that after just six steps of moving the ark, they stopped. And David sacrificed because of the significance of what they were doing. Now, scholars have argued this point a little bit about whether or not <clears throat> David only did this after the first six steps or if every six steps he stopped and sacrificed to God. There's disagreement on exactly how that took place. But again, further evidence that this really was something important, that David recognized the importance of what they were doing because it was part of their relationship to God. And so they moved the ark. Now David was in front, and we read that David danced with all his might. I don't think he did a little hokey pokey. It was great for the kids and for those of you who participated to do that this morning. I think he danced with all his might. He put everything into what he was doing, and it was because of his joy it was because of his joy in response to God's love. 
knowing that God was with them, knowing that God loved them so much, this filled David with joy and he couldn't contain it. And so he danced. And we read that there were tambourines and lyres and all kinds of instruments also playing for this joyful celebration of moving the ark to Jerusalem. What a joyful expedition that must have been. The text that we read from Mark's Gospel gives us a little different feeling. For the dancing there led to something different. Those who were present with Herod on his birthday watched this girl dance and they were so impressed that Herod said, oh, I'll give you anything. I'll give you up to half my kingdom. Go ahead, ask me for anything. And she didn't really know what to do. So she said, excuse me, went off and asked mom, what should I ask for? Mom didn't like John. Mom knew that John was in prison. So mom said, ask for John's head. She ran back and said to Herod, I want John's head on a platter. Now, Herod was caught here. He didn't really want to do this, we read. There was something about John that attracted Herod. There was something in the things that John said that got Herod's attention. He didn't want to kill him. And yet his reputation was at stake. He had sworn an oath that he would give this girl anything she wanted. And so rather than say, no, we can't do that to John, he went ahead and submitted to her request. That was the end of John the Baptist. We have dance in both of these scripture lessons. And we might say they were very, very different. And yet we need to take note of what happened when David got to Jerusalem dancing before the ark for his wife Michael who was the son or the daughter of Saul saw him and depending upon the translation you read she either despised him or held him in contempt because of what he was doing now, if we had continued that scripture further, we would know that there was a confrontation between David and Michael, and she said this about him. And he said, I was expressing myself to the, to the Lord, and I will do it again. I will share my joy before the Lord, and if others see it, that is just fine. I will not stop simply because you don't like this. When we were down in Puerto Rico, we attended a worship service on Wednesday evening at one of the local churches. It was perhaps the most joy-filled worship service I have ever attended. And I've gone to a lot, not just United Methodist, but others. There was so much joy in that room as we sang. And then we danced. In fact, we were told that a special person had been invited to come in and teach us to dance so that we could do that together in worship. And the time came, and she was introduced, and she said, everybody who wants to dance, get up and find an empty spot on the floor. And most of the people did that. Some people stayed in their seats. And then she said, just watch me. It was like she wasn't going to teach us anything. She just said, watch me. Do what I do. And they started this music, and, and most of the folks were up front, and she was in the center aisle, and she started to dance. And everybody else started to dance. And then within not too many seconds, somebody near me whispered, this is the electric slide. 
She didn't tell us that's what it was. But that's what it was. And we weren't listening to the, to the music that you typically hear, somebody calling that out, but we listened to some joyful music that had the same beat, and we all danced. And it was a dance of joy. A dance of joy because we were in the presence of God. And it was a wonderful experience. I don't know the electric slide very well. I kept bumping into people near me. A few others did as well. But it was a very joyful, liberating, free expression of our love for God in response to His love for us. And it was wonderful. Michael didn't like what she saw David doing. But he was doing it as an expression of love and joy for God. Now we can look at that and say, you know, sometimes we get caught up in this whole worship thing ourselves. Not everybody worships the same way. And we sometimes get caught up in the idea that there's only one really right way to worship. And we may have a preference in terms of how we worship, but there is no one right way to worship. There are many ways that we can worship God. We can do it joyfully. We can do it with reverence. We can do it with solemnity. And we can do it with exuberance. There are so many ways we can do this. If we look at worship as only one possibility, we limit ourselves. And we don't feel that joy of simply offering ourselves to God to worship. Worship is something that is very active. It is not something that we come and watch others do. It is something we do. We are all worshipers. And there are many different ways that we can worship. I would invite all of us to open ourselves to different ways of worship. Perhaps experiencing God in a whole new way. It may be joyfully. It may be in a more solemn way than you are used to or that might be your own personal preference. But as we expand the ways in which we worship, our faith deepens and we come to a broader understanding and relationship of who we are as God's chosen people. And so I would invite us to open ourselves up to worship God in different ways and experience a richer feeling in the presence of God whether it's here or whether you worship in other places as well. By the way, when we finished dancing in Puerto Rico, one of the youths had a question for me, and you know what that question was. When are we going to do this at Sharonville? <laughs> we may do this. We won't do it today. But as an expression of joy, in response to God's overwhelming love for us, we may do this. I invite us to worship. To worship God in all the ways we can, with all of who we are. As we did the hokey pokey this morning, it was as we give our lives to Jesus, all of ourselves, he turns our lives around. May we do that and worship God with all that we have and all that we are in response to his overwhelming love for us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Wonderful God, you love us more than we can know. And we are joyful because of that. Help us to be free to express that joy 
in whatever form that may take. Whether it is through our prayers, through our singing, through our dancing, let us show this love that we have for you in response to your love for us. Help us to do that. Free us to be joyful in our response to you. And help us to dance as David did. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs>